<laughs> you have indeed, although I doubt it was him calling. I would be very, very surprised indeed if he were making an adult-sounding lipid call. Oh, we, you just missed it, actually, because it was as we lost signal and disappeared off your screen that I came round the corner, and lo and behold, there is Hosanna lying up in a pile of dung. The best, most comfortable patch for a leopard to lie on. I guess, I suppose it's a bit spongy and quite squishy, so I guess maybe it is comfy. I don't see any fresh, fresh dung in there, so maybe not as bad as it looks. And the cesticulars are absolutely furious somewhere just behind him, which makes me think there's another leopard here. Maybe his sister, maybe his mum. He's hearing things as well. He's listening. You were a serious surprise, mister. I did not think you were going to have wandered all this way along here. Why did you wander all the way along here? I wonder whether last night Karula went to fetch him. Oh, yesterday morning, this young male leopard, who is almost a year old, in two days he's going to have his first birthday, um, he was following his mom and his sister, and he just decided he didn't want to follow them anymore, and <laughs> lay down and refused to go any further in a true teenage style. I think he just decided the morning was a little bit too early, and he went to sleep. He's also got quite a sore foot. It could well be from falling out of trees. What was I? Uh, sorry, I can't completely forgot what I was talking about. Oh yes, he's got a limp from falling, potentially falling out of a tree. Might have been from scrapping with his sister. I don't think it's too serious. Uh, the reason that I know that this is Hosanna is I know what Hosanna looks like. I don't know how else to explain it. He's got a very distinctive look. He's quite a big young leopard for a year old cub, and he, but still not as large as an adult leopard. He's also, underneath his tail, got the barest hint of a testicle. And of the two leopard cubs that we get in this area, one has testicles and one does not. His sister, Shongile, is presumably somewhere around here. You sleepy boy. Have you had a busy night? He also, in terms of identifying Hosanna, he also has a nick. I've just remembered, he's got a nick out of his left ear. A little, sort of just a little missing piece at the top there. So that is Hosanna. His sister is much tinier than him and has slightly brown eyes, although their eye colors become very, very similar. What a nice bundled up surprise to find whilst driving around. Now he'd, I mentioned earlier that it wouldn't be him calling and it absolutely wouldn't be. Um, male leopards only really start to show signs of dominance in that way, and that's what, calling like that is a territorial thing, it's a territorial marker to warn other leopards to stay away. And for male leopards, they only really establish themselves in territories at around about five or six years old. Of course, quarantine has proved to be the exception of that rule, where at four years old, already he is, he's been seen calling, he's been seen marking, and he's been seen mating. And quarantine appears to be the exception to that established rule. Good morning. Look at you sauntering. Yes, he's there. Look, she's going to ambush him. I am stealth. <laughs> like a sister jumping on her brother's bed when he's still asleep. <laughs> Sweet. There you go. So now we've got a brother and a sister reunited. That's what was causing the great alarm from the cesticulars. She's cleaning in his ear. Who needs earbuds when you've got a sister? It's a weird thought. <laughs> She's trying to entice him into play. And he's not really having any of it. <laughs> oh, Shogila, I'm tired. I'm growing. Leave me alone. <laughs> or not. A bop on the head.
The size difference isn't as pronounced anymore. Shungile's grown so much in the last month or so. She no longer looks as tiny as she did. That's what I think. Viam, you agree? Yeah. I don't think she's... She, there's such a disproportionate level between their growth sizes or their growth rates. Half cuddling, half, half just lying on top of each other. <laughs> it's, it's half affectionate. Oh, these two, for our newer viewers have joined us, these two are regularly left together on their own, as all leopard cubs are. So fortunately, they have each other for company. And when Viam and I were discussing earlier, or thinking a little bit about the fact, we're wondering about whether or not a solitary leopard cub or a lone leopard cub has an advantage or a disadvantage. Because, of course, they get more food, because they're the only ones sharing it with mum, but they don't get the play companionship that a pair like these two will have. And I mean, through this playfulness, they're actually learning vital skills and gaining strength in that will serve them particularly well in the future. Look at, <laughs> I mean, she's going in for the kill there. She's got her brother by the throat. Will she release him? Yes, of course she will. Go and clean the ticks off the back of his ears instead. Get up and play with me. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> oh, Hosanna is a tough being a long suffering brother, huh? <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is such a perfect <laughs> symbol of some sibling relationships happening right here. I love you, but also I want to bite you and kick you in the face. <laughs> and I will make sure that your ears are spotless. Get that paw out of my face or I will bite it. <laughs> so funny. Hosanna is not interested. He just she, he just wants to go back to sleep. Shongile is obviously the morning person in this relationship. Look at his face. <laughs> Lovely, lovely question coming through from Michael. While we watch two cats of completely different personalities, Michael, it's a question that is at the moment being researched. There's a lot of research going into answering. <laughs> oh, she's doing a good job of tempting him into it, whether he wants to or not. Michael, you want to know if it's possible for big cat cubs to have different fathers? It is something that is hypothesized is entirely possible because it does happen with cats, with smaller cats, that f l members of the same litter can be fathered by different fathers. We know that female leopards regularly... Sh look, she's listening. When, I think she wants to see if the cisticulars are alarm calling at mum. Nope, back to harassing poor Hosanna. Uh, Michael, it's something that is at the moment, it's one of the reasons why we go around and collect vials of leopard scat to send through as part of the study into paternity because it is something that's been suggested that is possible because females mate with multiple male partners, which is makes total sense because they want them to believe that they're the father and increase the security of their cubs. <laughs> I'm not sure who, who I feel sorry for here. Poor Hosanna who just wanted to sleep. <laughs> Get 
get off, Shogila. That hurts. Oh. Oh, now he's cross. That was too much. <laughs>